Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to secure your home network. Our home network is vital for everyday life. I mean, we use it for everything from banking, finances, connecting with the family, entertainment, movies, gaming, social media, and even IoT devices like the Amazon Alexa, baby monitors, Wi-Fi fridges and microwaves and heating systems, ring doorbells and other random things. Everything is trying to connect to our home network these days, especially with people working from home. Now you have a lot of people relying on their internet for their full-time income to support their families and often it could be one or two maybe three or four people working from one home so your networks are very important to secure another thing is like more and more services such as like government ids and government services and medical prescriptions they're all going through your home network or at least moving in that direction so your home network has become more responsible for being the medium in which sensitive information passes through and will continue to be used in more and more very sensitive ways and it's fair to say that in recent years the home networks got a lot more complex in terms of you've got your phones your tablets your tvs your devices your iot devices baby monitors everything is connected to it and with this additional complexity it creates additional security risks in cyber security we have a principle that the more complex a system or an infrastructure or something is the more security vulnerabilities will exist therefore with all this in mind there are some basic security practices that will help out so much from a security perspective and reduce most of the risk to your home network and just keep in mind whoever installed your router and modem isn't there for security purposes they're just responsible for getting it up and running you're responsible for securing your home network the internet service providers do some things regarding security um, but it's a shared responsibility they're responsible up until a certain point then you're responsible after that point which i will show in a minute so yeah stay tuned to understand more about the shared responsibility model and what you're responsible for and what your internet service provider is responsible for and just before we get into it this is an amazing little project that you can talk about in an interview you can write about it you can even make a video about it so if you're aspiring to get into it to get into cyber security it's just an additional thing you can mention and people in the industry will respect you for it and employers are more likely to trust you because you take your own home security seriously so yes let's start off by talking what a home network looks like i've got a diagram that i'm going to throw up on the screen and we'll go through it so there's normally two main pieces of equipment when it comes to a home network first you've got your modem and you've got a router. Now the modem is responsible for sending and receiving signals from your internet service provider and it's kind of the bridge between your home network and the internet. So everything past the modem and past the bridge to the internet is not your responsibility regarding security. You have no control over that part of the network. What you're responsible for is everything on this side of the diagram where it's your modem, your router and your devices. Now the router is responsible for dispersing the signals to devices on the network, usually done wirelessly, aka Wi-Fi. Now, in a typical home network setup, the modem is connected to the router, which is then connected to each device on the network or the devices connect to it. The modem and router are essential in ensuring a stable and reliable connection. Without the modem or the router, you would not be able to connect to the internet and devices on the network would not be able to communicate. Before any networking gurus get on and get into the comments and start criticizing, yes, the router can connect through a wire, but that's usually to only one device. But anyway, Anyway, I'm trying to keep things as simple as possible. So some manufacturers streamline this into one device. So you have a modem and a router combined into one device, essentially performing both roles. It takes up less space and it's more convenient. So yeah, you'll either have two separate devices, one being a modem, one being a router, or you can have both combined into one. So now we understand that we are responsible for the modem, the router security and everything else. What we have to realize is that there's a few steps we need to take to increase our security and reduce the chance of our network being compromised. So this is what a typical network would look like overall. So you've got your internet over here, which is the internet, the ISP, connecting to your modem, connecting to your router, and then that's dispersed to various devices. 
So you've got phones, laptops and computers, guest devices, IoT devices, which are, you know, your wireless kettles, your baby monitors, your TV, your wireless sound system, etc., etc. And then you've got tablets, which kind of overlap with phones. But anyway, now IoT devices present the most risks because these are very well known for being insecure. Often they have very small operating systems. They're not regularly patched. They're not big enough to have security software on them so the way we handle these is we want to isolate them from your main network because it can easily be compromised i'm sure you've heard stories about baby monitors being hacked and people switching people's lights on and off and whatever else through their network these are just notoriously insecure devices so one of the main things we want to do with this is we want to create a sub network and isolate them from the rest of the network and also you can take this one step further by creating the three sub networks so how i would structure a home network would look a little bit like this so you have your modem you have your router you have a sub network specifically for iot devices if you look at this green circle here this is an untrusted and vulnerable network but what you've done is isolated this network from the rest of your devices so essentially if someone did get access to this the blast radius of the impact of what they can do is significantly smaller and only will affect your kettle and your baby monitor and maybe your lights but not the rest of your network. Then what I would do is I would have a network for guest devices. Now mainly this is for when people come around and they ask you for the Wi-Fi password. You don't want them to be on the same network as your confidential information is stored and your other devices are. You don't know if they're patching their phones, if they're updating things, you don't know what kind of security risks they're presenting or what malicious intent they may or may not have. So what you would do is you would create a sub-network for guests essentially a guest network now with this it still needs to be password protected of course but it's a separate password separate thing for guests also what you could do as one additional control is add client isolation to this network which essentially means that when and if somebody connects to the guest network they will only have access to the network the internet but won't have access to other guests within that network so essentially it's isolating the connection from that device to other devices in the network and i think this is a good precaution now you wouldn't really want to do this on your iot network because then it will cause some usability issues where you can't connect your baby monitor or turn your lights on because everything's isolated nothing can connect over the network and often these types of devices actually need this to work but guest devices they won't care if they have no malicious intent and then you have your trusted network now obviously this doesn't mean that it's completely secure you still need to do a lot of security precautions to actually secure the devices individually um, such as keeping them updated having strong passwords etc etc however this is your trusted network for your own laptops for your own computers for your tablets for your phones and are completely separate so what you see here is essentially you have three networks that is one thing we can do and that is what i would suggest for securing your home network however this is just a network segmentation or segregation another thing you have to do is change all the default passwords you should never trust a password you did not generate yourself often these default passwords are repeated for the routers, modems, network devices, firewalls, whatever it is within the industry and at home. You'll get a little sticky label that comes in and it could be the same for all devices on that model. It could be different. We just don't know. So we change the default passwords for the networks and you could easily go to a website like this and this website will generate a password for you, save it in a password vault, your Apple keychain, your Android password manager, wherever it is, or write it down and keep it secure and hidden and yeah all passwords has to be changed now these are passwords for the networks and most importantly for the administrator interface so you might be wondering how do we actually do this stuff well the first thing you need to do is you need to log into your network's administrative interface. Now, this is an interface that controls the settings for your router and your modem. And often the instructions will be included in the box that comes with the router and modem. So it normally says admin as the username, and then you need to change the password. I recommend having it at least a 12 character password, but there's no reason you can't have more. Um, the more you have, the harder it will be for someone to crack that password. So yes, make sure 
sure you change the administrator password for the network interface. Make sure you change all the default passwords for all your networks and that they're all different. There's no point doing this if all the passwords are going to be the same. And yeah, another very important thing is make sure auto updates for your network firmware is switched on. So normally this is done by default, but what I would do is just double check this because you don't want a router that it's not up to date and is running really old firmware because it will likely have some vulnerabilities and people could compromise it quite easily. Now, this won't negate 100% of attacks doing all these steps. It will stop most of the attacks, but if you've got your network segmentation done properly, you've also changed any default passwords, you've got auto update switched on, you've got client isolation on the network and the guest devices or wherever you deem applicable, that will go a long way to secure your network. So yeah, securing your network is very important. And to be honest, it's a cool little side project. It teaches you a little bit about networking. Of course, there are a lot more stronger controls you can add, you know, like monitoring, logging, alerting, etc., etc. You can go to the nth degree with your network security. However, these are just some basic steps that you can do in about half an hour, just literally logging into your administrative interface and just changing a few settings and it will go a long way to secure on your network. I definitely think everybody should do this for the home network, take your own security seriously, and please don't think it stops here. If you have a very vulnerable device on the network, something running a really old operating system or something internet facing, or you're clicking on phishing emails, etc., etc., all of this can still be compromised so it doesn't stop here but this is part of like a defense in depth strategy which is what we do in cyber security and it's one layer of security and then there's other layers and other things you will do to defend against a more holistic attack so yes definitely do this i recommend you secure on your home network it's a cool little project you can talk about it in your interviews, you can blog about it, you can write about it, and it will show that you're interested in security to people. So yeah, I definitely recommend doing this. And if you've enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And interested to hear your thoughts, what you do for your own network security. I've spoken to quite a few people who go overkill on their home security. I mean, they take it very seriously, which is fair enough. And you might only need to do two segmentations instead of three. Not everybody has IoT devices and baby monitors and wireless fridges. I certainly don't. So some people don't need to necessarily segregate their network in the exact same way I've shown you in the diagram. But that's just general guidance on how you can split things up. So yeah, hope you like this video and I'll see you in the next one.